So what do mushrooms actually grow on? Mushrooms are different from plants in many ways, but one of the most obvious and the most important is that instead of just planting them in the soil, you need to colonize them on a suitable substrate. In this video, I wanna go over the many different substrates that mushrooms grow on and go over two of my favorite recipes for growing mushrooms at home. So first of all, what is a mushroom substrate? To put it simply, a substrate is a bulk material that mushroom mycelium can use to grow on, to gain energy and nutrition, and to eventually fruit mushrooms. The best mushroom substrate can vary depending on what mushrooms you're trying to grow, what materials are available to you, but they generally consist of a base organic material that the mushroom will use for energy, a little bit of added nutrition that will help the mushrooms fruit even better, and of course, a surprising amount of water. Hey Nova. Most non-mycophiles assume that all mushrooms grow on manure, and although it's true that there are some dung-loving mushrooms, the majority of gourmet and medicinal mushrooms don't actually grow on poop materials, they grow on on hardwood. Mushrooms use a substrate as a power-up before fruiting, so they'll grow through the substrate, they'll use it all for energy and nutrition, and eventually we'll have enough energy to fruit and drop spores and start the whole cycle over again. Now you might think that creating the perfect environment for mushrooms to flourish will also create the perfect conditions for bacteria and other contaminants, which is 100% true. And that's the reason why substrates need to either be pasteurized or sterilized. Pasteurization is a process that kills a high percentage of all the contaminants in a substrate, but it doesn't kill everything. It just kills enough to give the mushroom mycelium a head start. Now, this is suitable for substrates that have a lower nutrition profile and can be achieved through simple heat pasteurization or through chemical means by doing something like lime pasteurization. Sterilization is a process that just annihilates 100% of the contaminants or other competing organisms that might be in a substrate. Now, this is suitable for using really high nutrition profile substrates, such as hardwood substrate with added wheat bran or something else that has a lot of nutrition. And you also have to be careful after it's sterilized to make sure that it's sterile through the entire colonization process. Sterilization usually requires a little more equipment like an autoclave or a pressure canner. A reasonable question to ask is if mushrooms need to be grown on something that's been heat treated or sterilized, how is it possible that mushrooms grow in nature on logs or on dung? And that's a fair question and the answer is because mushrooms in nature, uh, it's much more of a balanced process. When mushrooms grow in nature or grow outside, it's not like you're forcing them to grow at a certain location at a certain time. Of course, mushrooms in nature have to compete with all the other organisms, but when mushrooms fail to thrive and fail to grow in nature, you're not going to notice it as much as you would when you're trying to do it in your own project. The bottom line is bacteria, molds, and other competing fungi can usually grow a lot faster than the mushrooms you're trying to cultivate. So pasteurization or sterilization is a necessary process in order to have success growing mushrooms. So let's get into the actual substrates. First are substrates that don't require sterilization. These are substrates that are low in overall nutrition but still suitable for growing mushrooms. An old time favorite is wheat straw. Now where I live, you can get a 40 pound bale of wheat straw for around three bucks. And if you properly pasteurize it, you can use it to grow all sorts of oysters, like pink oysters, yellow oysters, blue oysters, pearl oysters. I've even used it to grow king oysters and it works really, really well. Now straw is really great for making these straw logs. So you basically just take poly tubing and you pasteurize it and you stuff it in here with mushroom grain spawn and you can grow all sorts of oyster mushrooms and it works really well. But straw does have some downsides. First of all, it's really messy. And if you use straw to grow mushrooms, I promise you, you're gonna find it everywhere. It's gonna be coming out of all your clothing. You're gonna find it in every corner of your house because is really really messy in order to use it you got to chop it up and that creates just straw everywhere and it's not something you really want to use inside your house the other downside is that straw will often be quite dirty so if you go pick up a bale of straw from a farmer somewhere there's a chance that it's just been sitting in a barn and it's wet and it might be covered in all sorts of other contaminants and all sorts of other stuff so um, you're gonna have to be sure that you clean it properly or pasteurize it properly before it's gonna be good to use or even better if you can find clean straw that's gonna work best now I, I have seen some stuff on Amazon called Easy Straw and it's already chopped and it's already clean and it looks like it'd be a lot better than just buying a random bale of straw, but it is a lot more expensive. I think it's something like 40 bucks or something like that compared to the $3 you might be able to get a bale of straw for. But if you can find straw and if you have the tools to be able to pasteurize it outside, then it's a great way to go. Now, if you want to learn how to grow oyster mushrooms on straw, I do have a separate video for that so you can go watch that over here. The other substrate I want to talk about that works really well with just pasteurization is pure wood shavings. Wood shavings work amazingly well for oysters. I haven't tried them with lion's mane, but you know, it's just plain old hardwood. So it probably works really well for all sorts of gourmet mushrooms, but oysters in particular will absolutely love wood shavings. 
Now the best type of woods are hardwoods. You want to find something like aspen or oak and you will want to avoid the softwoods. So don't use spruce, pine or fir because they won't really work well for growing mushrooms. And you definitely want to avoid cedar chips because well cedar is antifungal. But if you can find a really good hardwood, the wood shavings of those work really great for growing mushrooms. Now a great place to find this if you don't have wood shavings just kicking around is actually at the pet store. It's the same stuff they use to make like animal bedding or hamster or guinea pig bedding. So if you go to the pet store quite often, you can find big old bags of aspen wood chips for really cheap. And if you've seen the five gallon bucket video that we did for growing oyster mushrooms, this is exactly what we used was aspen wood chips from the pet store. Another substrate that only requires pasteurization is something called coco choir. And I know somebody in the comments is going to tell me that I'm pronouncing it wrong. I don't actually know how to pronounce it, but coco choir is basically coconut husk that's been compressed into a block and it works really well for growing mushrooms. And it's also easy to find. You can find it at your uh, local hardware store. You can often find it at pet stores as well. And typically what it's used for is for using with plants and stuff and kind of helping to retain that moisture. And that's what it does really well is it retains moisture but it's also an organic material that mushrooms love to grow on. A lot of people when they use coco choir will mix it 50-50 with vermiculite. So vermiculite and coco choir is a great substrate for all sorts of mushrooms and you just got to make sure that you hydrate it the right amount and you pasteurize it and mushrooms will absolutely love it. Coco choir can be pasteurized as simply as just adding boiling water to a brick of coco choir inside of a bucket then wrapping it in a blanket and leaving it overnight and by the time you come into the bucket the next day it'll be cooled down it'll be fully pasteurized and it'll be ready to add your mushrooms for mycelium. Now, if you want to grow mushrooms in these grow bags and you have access to either a pressure cooker or an autoclave, you might want to consider using some substrates that actually require sterilization. Now, these are higher nutrition substrates that are going to work really well for growing mushrooms and produce really big flushes. And you can find some substrates that the mushrooms just absolutely love and you're going to get a ton of yield out of your substrate. This will allow you to make some pretty fancy recipes and basically make any substrate you want to grow any kind of mushroom that can be cultivated. Now, for any type of hardwood loving mushrooms, I always start with these hardwood fuel pellets as a base. Now these are basically just hardwood sawdust that has been compressed into a pellet and you can buy it in a big bag and they're actually pretty cheap and they rehydrate really well. So I've talked about this before but the recipe that I like to use for all sorts of gourmet mushrooms is for every five pound fruiting block so for every five pound bag I'm going to be using five cups of hardwood fuel pellets. I'm going to be using about a cup and a quarter of wheat bran and I'm going to use about 1.4 liters of water. So basically just get a big tote and I put the wood pellets in there and then I dunk it in the water and it mixes up to this nice sawdust and then I add the wheat bran, mix it up and then pressure sterilize it for two and a half hours at 15 psi. I've used this mix for basically every type of oyster, for lion's mane, for shiitake, for reishi, for uh, nameko, for chestnut mushrooms, all sorts of mushrooms will really really like this mix and you really don't need to do too much else than this. I mean you can get really fancy with your recipes but this one works really well. Now another substrate that is just killer for oyster mushrooms is something called the master's mix. The original master who came up with this mix is somebody named T.R. Davis from Earth Angel Mushrooms and I was watching his YouTube channel a long time ago and I had to try this mix and I was just blown away by how well it worked for oyster mushrooms. The recipe is simple, it's just a 50-50 mix of hardwood sawdust and soy hulls and then it's hydrated to 60% and sterilized again at 15 psi for two and a half hours. Now soy hulls if you don't know are just kind of the exterior skin of soybeans and they're kind of just a waste product of soybean farming. For whatever reason, these soy hulls are just an awesome substrate for producing huge fruits, massive fruitings, and just like these massive yields of oyster mushrooms. It also seems to produce for whatever reason, just like really nice dense clusters and really nice dense mushrooms. Now, soy hulls might actually be hard for you to find depending on where you live. But the recipe that I use for the master's mix is for every five pound fruiting block. Again, it's just two and a half cups of soy hull pellets, two and a half cups of hardwood fuel pellets, and then about 1.4 liters of water, which hydrates it to about 60%. Then again, you pressure sterilize it for two and a half hours at 15 PSI, and you're gonna have a beautiful substrate for growing oyster mushrooms. Of course, there are some mushrooms that do like manure. These are the dung loving mushrooms, and the most common one is the button mushroom, or Agaricus bisporus, which actually does grow on composted manure. Now, this is usually done on an industrial scale where they have these giant piles of compost, and it could be really hard to kind of replicate this at home. That being said, if you can find some composted manure, you can make a nice substrate for dung loving mushrooms. And I've done this with Cuprinus schematis or shaggy mane, and you basically just use a little bit of uh, manure. I use like uh, composted cow manure and then you mix it with 50-50 vermiculite and coco choir and then hydrate it to the right amount and again sterilize it or pasteurize it and it works really well. Now what about coffee for a substrate? You hear this a lot right where people are growing mushrooms on spent coffee grounds and although it does work you can grow oyster mushrooms on spent coffee grounds it really isn't a great substrate. It's really prone to contamination because it's 
really high in nitrogen. So unless you're really careful, there's a good chance that your project's gonna get contaminated if you try to grow oyster mushrooms on a straight coffee grounds. And really, it's just not a great substrate. I mean, you might have some success adding coffee to hardwood sawdust as a bit of a, you know, a nutritional substitute for the mushrooms, but just growing on pure coffee grounds is not perfect. Uh, it still could be a fun project, so you might want to give it a try, but it's not the best substrate for growing mushrooms in my opinion. So whether or not you want to grow mushrooms on coffee grounds or you want to use one of the proven recipes that I talked about here, um, you don't need to limit yourself to these because mushrooms are tenacious, especially oyster mushrooms. They can grow in all sorts of different materials and it might be fun to experiment and try different things. I mean, I've even seen people grow oyster mushrooms on like cigarette butts for crying out loud. So uh, maybe have fun experiment and try some different substrates. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope that was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.